Hey, hold on. I'll be right back, okay? Give me one second. Okay, guys. Let me get this shared. I got a, got a guest coming on today and I'm trying to figure this stuff out. You know, I'm brand new at this stuff, so... Okay, 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 okay. Now just, let's see, I'm just getting to share it out real quick and then we're gonna get started. Well, we already on live right now, just, just, just trying to get it shared out. Best place to set this thing up. <laughs> there we go. Alright guys, here we go, here we go. What's up Facebook? What's up YouTube? What's up Twitter? Hey, it's your boy Billy Ratliff here with the Volunteer Rose Show guys. Hey, we got a special guest here today, man. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do something a little bit different. I told you guys I was gonna start something and, and create something I've never done before. And we're gonna have my main man on here today. You know, we got my main man and one of our top fans and I'm gonna be bringing him on in just a few minutes, guys. Um, like I said, you know, today I always started off with, with my man, Coach Brooks. It's been a great day to be alive, guys. Great day to be better, you know. You know it's a great day to be thankful for a lot of things. But I'm going to bring my main man in real quick here, guys. What's going on, David? How you doing this morning, Dave? Hey, good morning, Billy. How are you? Hey, man, I'm blessed, man. I'm here. I'm uh, I tell everybody I'm I'm above dirt. I'm I'm above water. I'm not drowning. I'm not away. I'm here. I'm alive and I'm going, man. And hey, I want to say thank you for coming on this morning, man. You, you, you hit me up and um, say you was off, and I say, hey, why not? Let's go. Let's make this happen. So, what's going on, you. man? Talk to me. Not, not much, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 glad everybody's everybody's making it through this coronavirus so far that you know that, that we know of it it's getting crazy out there but um everybody in my circles are are are, are pretty good hanging on you know so as long as everybody just takes care of theirs and their own i think we'll be all right you know yeah well man I, uh, a little something I, I, I wanted to say about that i wasn't gonna say anything but i'm glad you brought it up like you know i talked to some of my friends about the situation like you know like my Friends are, you know, doctors, nurses, or whatever, or clinics and stuff, and you know, they they have yet to see a case of it. You know, I'm talking about people in Chicago, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Texas, Arkansas, California. You know, they have yet to see it, but they heard of it, what's going on, and 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 they're not afraid of it. You know, they're basically know it's coming or whatever. It's just because it's it's another virus. It's it's a it's a, another cold. You know, they're like. Just do what you always do, man. Just keep yourself clean, wash your hands, keep your, your hand sanitizer, you know. You know, this time, you know, don't be, you know, shaking people's hand, pound them, elbow, whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know, like the good old Southern, you know, we like the hug and all that, you know, yeah. just try to try to stay away as much as possible like that. But, you know, and still be respectful. But, you know, everybody know what's going on. So, you know, I'm quite sure everybody will understand that that's the reason you're doing that situation. So. So I'm hoping everybody is 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 
to just calm down a little bit. You know, I think yeah. everybody has gone to, to the extreme of it. I know everybody wants to be safe. And, and that's the first and foremost thing. And, and you know, it, it's, it, it's crazy that they, you know, they shut down the whole sports world. But, you know, I guess it's better safe than sorry in a sense. But I, I, I'm very surprised that they, they actually did that. Though. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about that? Especially in today's society, nobody wants to get sued, man. So I, I can I can understand it, but I know what they better have them football ready this September. I know that <laughs> because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of Southerners upset, you know, yeah. Tennessee or Georgia, Florida don't take that football field that that, that September weekend. There's gonna be some upset fans, man. Yeah. I can give up, I can give up baseball, I can give up NBA, but I ain't giving up my football, bro. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm telling you, I think, I think if, if this was going on during football season, hey, this would be the first time where people realize the earth is really round. <laughs> As they would turn this thing upside down. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but, you know, uh, just, you know what, uh, what's happened to common sense, Bobby? People, people just don't have common sense anymore. Wash your damn hands, mm-hmm. man. That's all you got to do. Just wash your hands. Don't be touching other people's faces. Just use common sense. Mm-hmm. In 2020, in 2020, is that where we got that the, the the CDC here in Atlanta has to tell us to wash our damn hands? Mm-hmm. That's, that's crazy, man. I mean, and you know what it was? I think I was uh, I was actually at Kroger's yesterday, man. And you know, I'm just going in and just get the basic stuff. I, I go to the store every day to get like you know my meat or whatever that I'm gonna cook or something because I like it fresh. And the one thing I went in there to get just to see if it was available was was the um, disinfectants and some Clorox or whatever, just to see what, what this the big hype is all about, you know. Because I, I had an old can of it, you know, and I wanted to compare the ingredients just to see was it the same. Yeah, I, I did get some Lysol. The only the only can they had in there was the, the lemon lemon scent flavor. I'm like, hold on, they didn't sell out the lemon scent? Come on now. <laughs> and, and, and and they had toilet toilet paper was gone. I was like, what on earth? Why is what? people overloading on toilet paper and soap and stuff? I'm like, really? I'm like, are, have they not been wiping their butts and stuff? <laughs> what have they been using for for, for uh, toilet paper or for the for the bathroom? And now all of a sudden, what? someone tells them they got to stay clean. They go give toilet paper. <laughs> what's uh what what's What's toilet paper wiping your ass got to do with a respiratory virus? Oh, I'm, I'm lost with it. it, it it's I mean, I, I, I've, I've never heard nobody, uh, excuse me for better lack of terms, I've never heard <laughs> nobody have diarrhea from having the flu. I mean, I mean, here, here we go again, back to what I just said. Common sense, man. Common yeah. sense. Yeah, you're right, man. And that's, and that's what all, all my friends told me, man. Just use what they call common sense, man. Just to, Take take care of yourself. Just just try to keep your, stay away from germs. I mean, just just be as clean as you can throughout this time. You know, and and drink lots of fluids. You know, and if you if you know like they tell you know it, it, it helps the elderly a little bit more. You know, so so go check on you know the elderly, your grandparents, your mom, your dad. You know, people, your next door neighbor. You know, check on those guys. You know, if they need help to go, you know, get groceries or things like that, you know, don't let them go to the store, you know, don't let them be around people that are sick, though, you know, to that people that have weak immune systems, that's who it attacks, and that's what every virus, you know, is pneumonia, the flu, it doesn't matter, I mean, if your immune system is, is not strong enough, that's who it's going to attack first, and, you know, and, and, and it sucks that we got to talk about this this morning, right? because... <laughs> Yeah, enough of talk of that, man. Enough. Let, let's let, let's get on to some kind of sport. I mean, <laughs> man, uh, what's hey? This is this is weird, though, man. Because this this is the, the supposed to be the biggest weekend in sports. Yeah. Because March Madness is the biggest sports event that is known in sports. I mean, besides the Super Bowl, um, and I and, and you know. Vegas is getting their tails kicked because they got to refund everybody all their money. Ooh. It's gonna hurt, man. I mean, they are they are probably giving trying to send people free this, free this to play the casino and all that stuff. Is 
Oh man, this this is gonna be something else, man. This is a weekend of not having sports. I'm I, I'm trying to see what it's gonna be like. I'm I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get out here in this yard and, and get this grass ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they, they were they were saying on the they were saying on the local Atlanta station last night. The uh, Atlanta was um, predicted about 130 million dollars from the Final Four, the national championship here in Atlanta, and you know it's not like our city needs it, but that's 130 million dollars, man, in the local economy that we have lost over this, and it's it's pretty bad. But you know, I mean, are, did they cancel it completely, or are they going to play it later on in March? I mean, are, is it just suspended, or is it, is it canceled completely? From, from from what I'm hearing and reading and seeing, it's it's they're gonna cancel it completely, you know, because you got to think about what's what's gonna happen with the situation. You know, timing of this event is not gonna be a good time to make it up because the events that's gonna be happening when they want to do, like let's say if they do in May, there are gonna be things that's going on in May. You know, you got the horse racing, Kentucky Derby stuff. You got all these things here that's gonna overshadow this thing but i know that we the people would actually still watch it but there's already people that already have that money already tied into those dates you know you know with advertisement you know people that are already paid for those spots and stuff and it's, it's it won't be easy i mean it's gonna be somebody's gonna lose and I don't think they're going to want to lose more money that's going to be in the future because they don't want this to be like, let's say, that this happened next year. There'll be a new virus, you know, what they're going to do. And hopefully they'll be prepared for something like this because I've never seen the thing that happened like it just happened in the sports world where, for instance, when they was, I was watching a game, um, it was actually yesterday, um, Creighton versus St. John in, you know, in basketball. I guess they hadn't heard the news that everybody had already canceled, and they was actually playing the, playing the game. They got they played all the way through halftime, and they didn't come back after halftime, and it was the game was over. And now, now how will like being the fact that St. John they was actually winning the game at halftime. Now that they canceled it, let's say if the tournament was to happen. Guess who goes to the tournament? Guess who go, who get that at first bid? Creighton, because they're the number one team in that conference. And St. John was winning. <laughs> that was <would> suck. <laughs> so we get the dub there, you know? Yeah, but it's gonna be something else, man. I can't wait to see how this works, man. Just this 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 weekend is gonna be a very creative weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what is ESPN gonna yeah, talk about? <laughs> it's strange. I mean, I mean, you know, we're probably not gonna have any spring football games. Um, they done canceled the opening opening weekend of baseball season. Uh, they done suspended all the the NBA season. I mean, we're going through another part of like December into January. Well, like January to February, we you know where it's a dead period of nothing. So you know, we're we're gonna get that again this year, but. But yeah. I, I guess the boys on the hill are still practicing because they uploaded a new video yesterday. So oh man, and then as, and as long see, as we get better, you know. And I was actually going to be going to practice yesterday, man, and and they told me that nobody can come to practice if they did have practice. So I was like, gosh, the day that I said I'm going to start doing this, they turned me down. <laughs> but. They did it right, you know what I mean? Because I think this, this, um, I think they're on spring break next week. I know my son, he's on spring break. Actually, we got, I got a call yesterday, man. It was like right, you know, we had just went to um, um, this this meeting he had for school to for the yeah, project and stuff. And as soon as he left the school, they canceled school the next day, and they're out for um, next week for spring break. Yeah. And I guess they're doing early cleaning and. And then my son, he, he actually showed me his phone yesterday saying that Hamilton County, they're out for the next two weeks for it. Yes. I was like, wow. Yes, my, um, my daughter, yeah, all, pretty much all the schools in Georgia, up in North Georgia, they're off for the next two or three weeks. They may not, they may not go back to April. So, I mean, that's... Wow, man. That's, yeah, I guess, you know, I guess it's better safe than so. Yeah. Got to take care of them kids, man. Them babies are our future. We got to, we got to protect them at all costs, man, no matter what. They're our, that's our future, so. 
Uh, David, let me. I'm gonna go over here to check out the chat and see what's going over here, uh -huh. man. Cause I think we, Bobby, he told me that um, YouTube was back up and running, and I, you know, I haven't had a chance to use YouTube, and he's normally the one that's watching YouTube. So I'm gonna go over here and check out YouTube and see who's on here real quick. Let's see here, guys. Hey. Blake West Music. He said, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all doing? Hey, man, we, we doing great, man. We doing great. He said, panic, and it ain't that, bro. It's because they soft and <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Blake West, hey, I'm with you there, man. You know, we, you know, I'm quite sure you grew up, you know, in, a, in an era like me back in the day, you know, hey. Wash your hands and keep on going. Keep on drinking water out of the hose pipe and, and, and make it happen, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. hey, let's see. We turned out just fine, didn't we? Hey, Billy, we turned out just fine, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Killer Minds. Good morning, Billy. Awfully glad to see you guys back. Hey, we, we're, we're back, man. I mean, I'm not sure what was going on with the YouTube, man, but we, we're back, man. We're back. I mean, uh, we missed a couple of shows with YouTube, but we're, we're still going, man. Uh, next time, I... Uh, we need to get Bobby C to start telling you guys to come check us out on Facebook, man. I mean, we're, we're, we're on there live. I am myself every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 a.m., guys. Let's see here. Let's see. Blake. Yeah, it's like, Bobby, it's like Bobby. It's like Catfish. He don't, he, don't care, he don't care about us Facebook people. He just worry about them YouTube folks, ain't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he going to. Hey, I've told him, hey, Facebook is about to blow up with us, man. We're we, we about to start getting... Facebook yeah. on the map, and we're gonna get Facebook to come to YouTube as well, you know. You know, because like, I mean, because the conversation that we see here on YouTube, I mean, we probably can't, don't really want to say it like we say it on Facebook, but there's a lot of people that's on Facebook and YouTube. YouTube is, is you know, when Bobby's talking, I mean, they're chatting like, like amongst themselves all the time. Let's see. Hey, I mean, look, and Blake, he's giving some knowledge, man. Hey, he say, he say, take zinc, y'all. He's crazy, whatever it means. Hey, Blake, hey, I take it all, man. I mean, I take zinc and vitamin C every single day, man. I, I've been doing that for a long time. I mean, it's I have yet, and I'm, not, I'm gonna knock on wood, which is my head. I'm gonna say my head. <laughs> and I haven't got sick, man. I want to say, gosh, it. it I want to go all the way back to probably like high school, man. I mean, as far as having a, a cold or anything like that, I mean, vitamin C and Zeke. And, and normally this time of the year, I double up. You know, you go whenever you get the, um, if you go buy that stuff, you know, look at the bottom and, and, and instead of using the directions it says use, double up what it says throughout this time. I mean, it will help, I promise you guys. Let's see. Bobby Taco, he said, good morning, America. Hey, good morning. Steve Lerman, he said, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, it's a great day, guys. Great day to be alive. Great day. Let's see here, man. Let's go over to Facebook, man. Let's see. Let's see what we have here on Facebook. Well, normally, I, hey, I send a shout out to you, David, but hey, <laughs> you here with me today, so... <laughs> Let's see, got my man Jared on here. Hey, good morning, man. Jared, he over out of Texas, man. He keep inviting me to come over to Texas, man. He's he's always at like every event that Texas have, like the the Rangers. He's a big baseball fan, man. He invite me to come out. I wish I can now. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna be a MLB season now, Jared. So I, I want to come out there. Patrick Eady. So the baseball and softball World Series is canceled. Now they're saying, well, I play the season. Oh, man. Yep, so I would say, man, let's start football early then. <laughs> I guarantee you. And, you know, I, and I, it feel, I feel bad for, you know, the kids right now with the March Madness stuff too, though, because, you know, these kids, you know, I know they want to play the, play the game, you know, you know of course, and, and, and they don't really – care about that situation and but you know I, I like i said I, I i get what they're doing they're they're trying to make sure things are safe but the one thing that you know they have to do is is just make sure everything is clean you know you know just wipe everything yeah. down i mean like because what are they going to do you know once they f find out and fix this thing here for us with 
with the coronavirus, there's going to be something else. I mean, there's still going to be pneumonia. There's still going to be the flu. So what are you going to do about that situation? I mean, we can't continue to protect them from something that we can't control or what we can't see. So we, so they, I guess they're basically telling us that we got to just not be human because by shutting everything down, that just made everybody panic even more. They're making people think that it's 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 bigger than what it really is. And and that's the right. part that that's that got me because they're making people panic and they're not telling people what they're really panicking about, but they're just saying it's the coronavirus. They're not telling you yeah. you know they're they're not saying, hey guys, this disease or virus is basically the flu on or the cold or cold common cold on steroids but they just scare us and say we don't have a cure for it yet <laughs> okay yeah my um i got a cousin who's an rn at piedmont atlanta and uh she was saying that they had they had patients in their hospital that has it that they have not reported that they don't want the uh, you know the, the the mass spread of panic Mm-hmm. In the hospital where the, employee, where the employees won't come in, but she said there's confirmed cases of it in her hospital, and it it's just I, I don't understand. I mean, people's going to die of the flu. I mean, it, it's just like you said, it's just a a cold or or flu on steroids. Yep. You know, so we once you know we just got it. We we just not you know we don't get political on this page. We don't do it. We don't talk politics. But we just got to trust our government. We got to trust the CDC just the, the, the medical bill that they will lead us in the right direction to get this under control as fast as possible before it before it spreads into our country as bad as it has into other countries. We're mm-hmm. very lucky, you know, we're, we're the best country in the world. If you ever want to get mm-hmm. sick, you want to you be in America, mm-hmm. so. And, and, and that's when I say, when, when you just said it perfectly, we're the best country in the world, man. And in times like this, you know, you would think that we're a lot smarter than what we are and do what we're so, supposed to do in a way. Let's come together. Make sure it happens, you know. Like I said, let's let's protect our neighbors over here. Make sure the elderly, man, just go out your way. Like today, yeah. I'm trying to find somebody I can go help today, just so I can. I'm I'm going to the grocery store and, and sit in the handicap lane and and see if anybody need me to go in there and get something from out the store real quick, you know. I'm 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 begging somebody on here in Knoxville, Tennessee, that's watching me or know me right now. Send me a message, and I'll be more than happy to come help anybody today. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, hey, that's what hey, we got to do, man. Most. And that's what we got to do. Take care of each other. Most you know? definitely. And 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 here, and I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go even further than that. I'm gonna challenge everybody on Facebook, all my friends that is watching us today, anybody on YouTube, do the same thing. Whatever city you're in, I don't care what state you're in, whoever you are. Try it, man. Go check on your next door neighbor. You know, they may not like you. Hey, go introduce yourself. Go tell them, hey, what's up, man? Hey, I would love to help you. If there's anything you need, let me know. It's this time, hey, you may right. not want to go to the grocery store. You may not feel like it. You know, you may be afraid to go out there. But I'm willing to do that to you to help you because guess what? I love you. I want to help you. And that's what it's all about in America, man. We got to learn to help each other because if we can't help each other, we can't really help ourselves these days. It's, it's hard. That's right. So, let's see. Who else we got on here? Oh, let's see here. <laughs> Jerry said, we just move on to foot, to fall and get football going. <laughs> but I said, that's what I said, dude. Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> hey, I would, lo- I would, I would hey, love hey, that, that happen. I've never, I've, I've never, I've never in my life been more ready for a summer and the heat to get here to kill this damn virus, man. I'm not a summer person, but I'm ready for the heat to get here and kill this virus, man, because I'm telling you what, I'm probably going to lose my mind if they cancel this football season, man, for real. <laughs> hey, I was I, I told somebody that too, man. I said, if this was to happen in the fall, I think this would be the one time that I would probably say, I don't think I can go out and help anybody because see, everybody would be mean, man. They would be angry. There would be so many people that would just, gosh, 
That's, that's the love of the game, man. I mean, and, and I tell you this, I mean, the football players the same way, man. Like, it would be hard to keep those guys from out there trying to train or do whatever they want to do as far as play with each other. It's hard, man. I mean, I'm glad the NBA did it. I'm, I'm, it, it sucks how it's working out, though, because there's so many people that it's really affecting and and, and gosh, man. <laughs> But, yeah, it but, is but, but I've, I've noticed, I've, I've noticed this year too. There's no, I mean, Tennessee can't win the national championship basketball. I don't really care who wins the national championship basketball. But I've noticed there's no real dominant basketball force out there right now. Mm-hmm. So to me, I, I honestly, I really don't care who wins the national championship. I still like doing the brackets at work and stuff. You know, putting a twenty dollar bill on it, and do you know, winner take all bracket. But I mean, honestly, man, I don't really care. I just, I, I'm, I'm just. Concerned about the fall. That's, that's all yeah. I really care about. And, and I'm, I'm the same way, man. And 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 I, and I and I tell you this here. I'm willing to bet anybody's bracket against mine. I guarantee you, mine will be better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guarantee you. We got a lady. I'll guarantee you. I'm doing. I'm, I'm gonna say it like the like 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 I keep giving everybody my old saying. Like Coach Brooks says, I'm gonna give it to you like my partner said. I'm going undefeated. <laughs> I would not lose on my March Madness bracket this year. <laughs> yeah, we had a lady at work, man. Never watched a basketball game in her life. She got in our pool two years ago, and uh, we gave her the printed out bracket and all that, and we all put twenty dollars on it. And uh, she wanted to win the damn thing, and we said, How, "How'd you pick?" You know, I think she lost like four games in the whole bracket, Billy. Wow. <laughs> How'd you do that? And she said, I don't know. She said, All I did is I Googled each team's mascot and the team that I like better. I, <laughs> I said, I said, Man, we're doing this all wrong, man. We're, we're doing it all wrong. You know? Hey, I believe it or not. She went like two like grand. Hey, she went like two grand mean, on a pickle bracket. That's how I pick my bracket sometimes based on the mascot. I mean, I'll do three, four different brackets and I do something silly like that on my brackets, right? <laughs> Yeah, just do one stupid, just do one stupid off the wall bracket and watch that be the one that's going to get. <laughs> uh, I was actually going to go live this year with my bracket and I was going to pick out two teams and I was going to tell my dog to pitch with team, whatever he nodded, I was going to say, okay, that's the team I'm going to pick. <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't know who I would have picked to win the National Championship. It's, just, it, it's so up in there this year with you know, you got, of course, you got your Cinderella's. You know, you had like San Diego State, but I mean, you know, they dropped a few at the end there, but um, you don't have no dominant Kentucky, no dominant Duke, you know, no Villanova. Like, who, who, who was who was really going to win this bracket? You yeah. Know, Kansas? I mean, you're right. I mean, Kansas probably, I mean, if any team was, was, would probably be the team that win, it would probably be Kansas that had a complete team, but they were still too inconsistent for me to say that they can go out there and do it. And then, because, like, I'm going to tell you right now who I was going to have in my bracket. I was going to take Kansas and Kentucky, and I was going to flip the two teams. Because Kentucky, they have a team that they can do it. You know, you know if they if they play up to their potential, it's hard to beat a Kentucky team like yes. that. But they, they were inconsistent, too. And then if with Kansas, you can get the big man in foul trouble, now you got to even match. But Kansas, if, if, if he is playing and it's not in foul trouble, there's nothing you can do with that dude. <laughs> you know, I, I don't understand it because Bill Self has been there. That, that system is established deep in Kansas. And it's like they're, they, they'll they get that number one seed or get that number two seed overall. And they'll get, what, to the Sweet 16 lead eight and mm-hmm. just lay an egg. You know, I don't understand how, how, especially Bill Self, can't as dominant as a coach as he really is, and he really is a very dominant basketball coach, why their teams – are not winning it every year, or at least every two or three years. I, it blows my mind that they can't they can't put it together consistently through one season. And I don't get it either, man. It's 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 weird. It's weird. I'm like normally we have a very consistent team that's out there, but yes. that's that's not the the, um, the issue now. That is not the issue. So hopefully, man, now, next you year. What. Oh, go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. I didn't if, 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 Ten- if Tennessee, 
No, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. If Tennessee can go ahead and solidify this, this number one or this number two um, recruiting class, you know, we got focusing probably going to come back and then, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll still have a Stoving and, and a Triple J. I call him Triple J. You know, Jordan Josiah James. But um, if, if, if we can go ahead and get this top five class, Rick Barnes is going to have something to play with the next few years. And I'm pretty excited if, if, if these kids go ahead and sign. I think most of them go ahead and sign, but if, if we just solidify this, man, we, we got a bright future in basketball. And then everybody, the, the nation knows now, buddy, we got a bright future in football under uh, Coach Pruitt, too. So it's an exciting time to be in Knoxville right now. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I said. You know, next year is going to be huge for all of our sports, man. I mean, next year is it's going to be back to where I say we're going to start to become dominant again, you know, even in football, you know, because – I've told everybody we need at least three recruiting classes from Pruitt to be able to, like say, he's competing every year in the SEC East now. This year, we're going to see a yeah. glimpse of what Pruitt is really all about. And now I say this on the last show, the fact that he said that I finally have 85 scholarship players. I got 85. I've got four different teams to show me something to see what it takes to become yeah. better. We finally got what I call leadership to show the younger guys what it takes to be successful. You know, we got we finally got you know the receivers that showing that we still are wide receiver you to show the younger guys how to compete as a wide receiver. The only position that I'm I'm been waiting for them to step up is the quarterback position. But I personally yeah. still blame that on the coaches. The coaches have to get the quarterbacks Absolutely. in the right situations. I don't care if they're not doing their job. Find someone that can do the job. Because guess what? I'm not blaming that on, on Garantano because guess what? The backup quarterback didn't do anything any better. So that don't show that. Nope. That, that shows that to me personally, the position coach is not doing his job how he should do it. Because if you have a quarterback that's supposed to be okay or, or whatever, they should at least know the basics of being a quarterback. Um, not taking a sack or, or throw the ball away or don't just try to play mistake free as a quarterback. And that gets you a long way if you're not trying to overdo it as a quarterback. And I didn't see that. I still, I mean, for instance, with Garantano, I mean, he has had, what, two, one, two, three, three different off, I mean, quarterback coaches since he's been there. You know, that's hard. You know, those quarterbacks have it tough, you know, and they finally, this is the first year that they can say they got a consistent offensive coordinator, you know, from back to back. I mean, this is the really first time they can say they consistently have a strength and conditioning coach. It's, it's, it's been tough. People don't realize all these ingredients it takes to become a Dominant football team. And here, I'm going to tell you something that you guys watch out for. Watch how Alabama decrease. They just lost their main ingredients. They just lost their their strength and conditioning coach. And I'm not saying it's going to happen this year, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Because this year, they'll still have his program in effect. Yeah. But next year, they won't have his bread and butter. How he come up with the things to to make these guys continue to be who they are. It's, it's tough, I'm telling you. That's why I've always said, you don't get rid of those two people on your staff when you get a new coach. You don't get rid of the strength and conditioning or the medical staff. Those people are the most important people on the staff. They're the only ones that see these kids all the time. The coaches, they can, they can only see them when they can. You know, they have the certain hour rules and all that stuff. For the kids, when they're working out, they have to have somebody to assist them, to watch them, to do these things. Medical staff, they got to know your health. They got to know your blood pressure. They got to know all these things, what's going on with you. But we're getting ready to see the the West is about to be something else, especially with these two new coaches that jumped in the West. Oh, man. They, they, you got some juggernauts over there now. <laughs> we may we may be uh we may be witnessing the uprise of Texas A and M and the fall of Alabama. To be honest with you, man, uh, I, Jimbo, I, I'm just I'm just surprised. Texas A and M wasn't a bad program when he got there. Mm -mm. Um, 
I'm, I'm just surprised they didn't finish, you know, second or third in the West last year. But well, I mean, oh, I well I'm, I'm gonna tell you why, David. It, it, it comes down to what I say about it, man. When you don't have leadership on that field, as far as you know, someone that's the, a, a consistent leader, if you don't have those senior, those upperclassmen, you know, there's a lot of kids that jumped ship last year from A and M that went pro. Or, or, or they left the school, you know, that, those things matter. You, know, you got, you know, the whole recruiting event. He, even, he savaged a heck of a recruiting class last year, you know, and, and for him to come in and, and keep that, that was huge. Now, watch that team this year, man. <laughs> That's the team that everybody really thought that would have competed a lot more in the SEC because of what they had coming back. But they lost some really key pieces on that defense. That defensive line, they lost. But this year, whew, it's going to be something to see with Auburn, A&M, with, um, shoot, Ole Miss. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't wrap my mind around Kiffin going back in the SEC. Oh. And Ole Miss, come on, man. Really? Man. But, but I'm telling you, like this, man, man, people just don't get, man, the, 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 the recruits, the kids that are out of Mississippi that people don't know about. You know, you got a couple of junior colleges right there in Mississippi that has all these good players that he has a huge pipeline. And and what Coach Kiffin brings to the table, man, he's, he's a player's coach. Those kids, they love him. He, he, he still do what the kids do. You know, he's still, he's into the social media. He's still into the hype stuff. He he adapts to these kids. And that's why these kids love him. And that's why he always get these kids. You know, and, and and I keep saying, I keep asking myself, what is it that Coach Kiffin is doing that make these people keep hiring him? I mean, he has to have a hell of a interview process. He needs to come out with, with his, with, his, with a, how to get hired book because this man has had some of the best jobs ever, man. I just want to know. I'm like, coach, how did you do it? I mean, you get hired as a head coach, as a writer. Oh, that's not easy, especially with the, the uh, management that they had out there at that time. Then we get hired here at the University of Tennessee at a high power SEC school. Wow! After a legend, with with, <laughs> with 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 not even a snap of experience in college football. That's what. That's you know, the, how, how do you go from Oakland Raiders to the University of Tennessee without even a snap of experience in college football? This dude, this dude, this dude's got a killer mouthpiece on him, bro. Or he, he's got something about him. <laughs> That or he's cutting checks. He's cutting checks in these schools. Hey, I'll pay you to let me come coach your team. Well, he he got something going on, man, because you don't get hired like that, like that. Back to back to back to back. I mean, then he get, I mean, and in the middle of the season, he get hired by USC. He left. And went come on, man. Then we get fired. He, he still no, gets and, a, and then he, he gets a big position to go to um, Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> he, he won a national championship at Alabama. Uh, then, I mean, then he leaves dude, that and dude, still, still gets a head coach job. He's a coaching guy, man. He's a coaching guy, bro. He's got to be. Uh, I, I want to know, man. I ain't going to lie. I want to know. I really do. Look, I wish I'll he could teach this, me. As, I'll say this. As lucky as that guy is, I wouldn't be shocked if he don't go to a bowl game this first season at Ole Miss. <laughs> I can't wait hey, to see it, bro. I mean, what what did he do at Tennessee? Seven and five his first year in 09? What, mm -hmm. Was it seven and five or, or six and six? What did, I forgot what we went. It was like seven and but five we, or something like that. We went to a bowl game. Yep, he did. We went to a bowl game. But it, yep, and, and then I'll tell you this here, man. I mean, People may not believe this here, but I, I will say this. If Coach Kiffin would have did what, you know, his situation, he'll tell you now. If he knew what he know now, he would have stayed at Tennessee. And me, 
you know, thinking about if he would have stayed here at the University of Tennessee, what yeah. type of program it would be, you know, especially if he would have, you know, indulged into the rules and regulations and things and made sure Tennessee would go into on probation because of his <laughs> his party or his his things he did. <laughs> but I think he, he understood that. And then I, I think right now we would probably would say that right now we would be a powerhouse still right now. You know, the turmoil that we went through when we lost him to find a new coach and stuff, that's what killed Tennessee was. How do we know that this coach not going to change? How do we know this coach? Not? And then and then it went that way. When Dooley got here, we, we didn't get better. No. No? Uh, let's see here. Let's go see who's on the chat with us, man. See if anybody else got on with us. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Stacy brings you on. Good morning, Stacy. Ron Hughes, he's watching. What's Good up? morning. What? Deborah Dershowitz, Dewey Do, Dewey Bowes, Tiny Cons. That's people here watching us this morning, man. Good, man. It's good to see everybody out today. It's Friday, early Friday morning. Hey, hey, Let's hey. Get hey. This going, man. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad we to see people going. checking us out, man, because you know, sorry. Well, it is a early day, and I'm not sure if you guys um off work today. Like, they, they, I think David got off work because they closed his place down for the corona, too, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, David, uh, you ain't playing hooky today. You ain't calling in sick and told everybody you you um you, you staying home to clean the house for the set of coronavirus and stuff. Did you? They gonna see you on TV on, on Facebook playing hooky now? <laughs> got a deep. I got I got a deep clean my house, man. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. But I'm I'm about to go in here and um put this brisket on this grill and let that bad boy smoke all day. Is Bobby coming back in tonight? Um, Bobby, I think he was. I forgot where he was. I think he's in Ohio, um, helping somebody move. If I'm not mistaken, uh, and I, I mean, the reason I know that because I had to, I had to ship him his his charger to his computer. Because he always leaves something at the house every time. <laughs> and he said, "I got everything." I said, "Yeah, you're gonna forget something." And then he he leaves the most important thing he needs for the show. The charge for the he, he knows he leaves something. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows he leaves something so he can come back, man. Hey, he knows he welcome it. He, 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 he like I said, he got his own room here. He said, <laughs> <laughs> "Start charging his ass rent, bro." <laughs> oh man, that's true. He's welcome, man. You welcome anytime, man. You come in town, man. Hey, got a place to stay, man. What's our Facebook side? I can't, I can't say who's uh, live on the Facebook side, but what's oh. our Facebook comments looking like? Well, let's see. Everybody's watching. No one's coming. Everybody, I think they're afraid to, to, to come in, so it's all good. They, they're they going to get some confidence eventually. Hey, man, we got hey, another one of my ex-teammates on it, Matt Blankenship, man. You know, hey, it's crazy, man. I mean, I know you guys don't know who Matt Blankenship is. Matt Blankenship was, was a linebacker there. He was a walk-on. But when I say, oh, Matt will knock your head off. Man, that's what we had in walk-ons back then. But they didn't care. They was they, they did try to knock our heads off. I mean, if you go, if you get a chance, go to Facebook and look up Matt Blankenship. This man is still doing Olympic workouts. He's still competing and stuff, doing these things. Oh, wow. And when I say, I'm like, Matt, how on earth are you able to lift this weight and stuff? Man, I mean, I would... You know what I'm saying? He's doing power cleans, split jerks. I'm like, gosh. I mean, at the age right now and what his body's going through, for him to still be doing that kind of work, wait, man, I, I'm, I can't believe it. And, hey, all I can say is, man, hey, congratulations to Matt. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Hey, I can't do it. Hey, I, I don't even think I can pick, bench press 135 right now. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Hey, I'm serious, Don't man. Like uh, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, man. I, 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 bet, I, I bet you can still throw a 300. I bet you can still throw a 300. I bet I can, too, but I guarantee you, you're going to hear oh, about me it, in the 911 report being that I was rushed to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, hey, I, I, I was... Uh, I don't remember what page I was on. I don't think it was 
I don't think it was Cheese's page, but somebody had posted a picture of our football team back like it was the early nineties or right around the mid nineties of, of our boys in the locker room without their shirts on. Mm-hmm. Man, our dudes were jacked back oh, in the day. Yeah, there man. was there was one guy if, if you're looking at the picture, the guy was on the bottom right corner. He's he's an Asian guy. That dude was swole, man. I said, Who the hell is this guy? And I tried to go back and find out who he was. I couldn't find out who that was like, dude, if we that's why that's why we was that's why we was kicking everybody's butts back in the day. Look them dudes was and dudes was monsters, man. And put it like this, and that guy that you're referring to, he was a walk on. Really? Yes. That's what I'm telling you. We had some animals, man. I mean, we pushed each other, man, because but like if, if it wasn't for the walk-ons, man, we wouldn't have been successful. We couldn't if, if they didn't give us a true look. We couldn't do what we did on Saturdays, and that's what I say. Like people think it was like us going against our first team or our second team in practice. No, it was the walk-ons that was giving us hell, man. Our practices was harder than our games, man. <laughs> It was that hard. I'm yeah, serious. I, it was hard. Yeah, I remember uh, back in high school. Uh, my high school, Union City, was uh, was Chad Clifton's uh, <laughs> high school. Was, was their main rival. Was Mark Westview against Union City was the big deal back in West Tennessee. And uh, I remember watching that dude in high school and thinking, that dude. I mean, he would take on double teams, triple teams, and I'm just like, <laughs> man, this guy's a, this guy's a freak, man. Man, Chad, you know, was a, just, Chad was an yeah. animal, man. He was a monster. People. He was a monster. He brought it. He brought it every snap, dog. He brought it every single snap. Yeah, like when I the first time I ever saw Chad Clifton, man, like I had never seen people that big. You know, I mean, I, I was not that big in <laughs> high school. You know, I mean, when I remember when I came to Tennessee, I, I didn't know people that dang on big, man. I, I thought I was too small to play the game yeah. then. I mean, I, I'm serious. I really went back home and told my po- my people, my coaches, my mom, uh, I'm too small to go play up there. All right, so that's what made me. That's what made me get fat. I went back home, and I'm eating Popeye's chicken every other day, man. I'm, I go get an eight-piece special for, you know, the. it was back then. A like eight piece was really cheap back then. It, it was like four ninety nine for an eight piece. <laughs> I would get an eight piece and I would eat that whole eight piece after school. Man. Every other day, I would have an eight piece and a one liter Hawaiian punch. <laughs> Getting it in, son. Getting it in. <laughs> oh man, but guys, it's about that time for me to get out, man. Hey, David, man. Hey, I appreciate you, man, for coming on, man. Hey, this won't be the last time. And once again, I'm gonna say this to my fans, everybody that's watching. Hey, if you want to come on here, let me know. And like David's on here today, guys, we can chat together. That's what I do. I'm hey, I'm here. I'm for the fans. We was built by the fans. That's like what our slogan is. And we're going to try to keep it real like that all the time because we all human. We're not, we, I'm not this big time celebrity, sports talker, all this here. I am just like you. Me and David, we don't kick it at the tap house. We don't eat together, drink together. We have fun. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to meet you. I want to meet everybody if I can, you know. So chat down here. Send me a, a private message here on Messenger. And I'll be more than happy to have you on the show, guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 an incredible experience to go to Tap Out on Saturdays and do the live shows and have the have all the have all the fans watching the games on the. Uh, they probably got what fifteen big screen TVs and then the big projector screen in the middle. It's just it's 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 almost like being uh, at the game, really. Um, <laughs> it's 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 a fun experience, you know. If you can't you know if you can't make it to the game, you know, just tickets or something. The closest thing, guys, is uh, the Tennessee Tap House in Knoxville. It's on North Peters Road. It's a it's a great place. Great food, uh, great service there. The waitresses, the cooks are phenomenal. Um, great experience. Great venue to uh, to spend your Saturdays at. And uh, we would love to have you. Just come on out and, like like Billy said, just introduce yourself to everybody and and uh, and just ch- we'll chop it up, have fun, and 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 watch our balls get more. More and more wins. 
Yes, sir, because it is going to be a great season, man. Have you had a chance to look at the schedule? I mean, the schedule. Oh, man. The yeah. schedule. Looking at the schedule, that schedule to me when I was playing, oh, man, I'm talking about licking my chops. The people you get to play, I mean, some of the places you get to go, man, that's that. The schedule we have, well, here, the schedule that we have today, next year, would be a schedule that if we lost a game, we still got a chance to get back in it because of the people that we're playing on our schedule. But now, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy how, how, how they select the teams now, you know. Back when I played, you know, it was the top 25, and then they did the BCS or whatever. Because back in our day, I remember, let's say if if Tennessee was ranked number one in the country last year, and then they lost to Georgia State. Back in my day, that next following week, Tennessee would have been receiving votes. <laughs> they would have been knocked out of the top 25. Nowadays, they drop to number 12 or something like that and keep them in it. And they mess it up for the teams that's behind them that are working it are still winning. That's what I don't like about the new playoff situation. It's not fair. No. If we can, if, if we can leave Norman, Oklahoma with a W, oh, man. you better watch out. The, you the, better watch out. The shine, the stars, the sky will be the limit. That game right there, I'm telling you, that is the game that's going to make our season the best season of a start ever just because of the fact that they're beating an Oklahoma team. And that's if they beat Oklahoma. If they beat Oklahoma, David, I have a – I mean, I will say it will have the feeling – of the 1998 season, based kind of it was start off kind of like when we finally beat Florida. That's when we came and oh. felt invincible, man. The way the coaches coached us after that game, they had us so hyped. Where it made us feel like we can go out there and beat any NFL team. That's how hype they had us. They had us that motivated to do that. And that's the kind of motivation I'm hoping going to happen if we do beat Oklahoma. If we we all know we, we all know Tennessee's got to be Florida and Georgia to get relevant back in the SEC. But if, ten, if Tennessee beats Oklahoma, I think we become national relevant again. So oh. we, we got to go in there and get that W, man. We got to go in there and beat them. Well, That's a must win. That, that game is oh, a must win for us. Yes. And if we win that, we win that game. That's when I'm going to yes. have to need Coach Pruitt to have my boys on lockdown. Because that's when the world try to find every piece of dirt on the orange and white. <laughs> Especially ESPN. And they don't I, like us. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad we catch them in week two instead of week six or week seven, you know. So I mean, because because man, they, I I don't know. I think they've got a quarterback. Um, I think they've got a quarterback producing factory on campus, and they all they do they just go in there and just put another quarterback on the field and, and just win another Heisman and just keep on going because um, that quarterback they got coming up is, is just is just as good as Murray and uh, Mayfield. So mm-hmm. we're we're gonna have to bring it. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. Man. I watched the I watched the highlight. I watched the highlights yesterday of the practice, and uh, I didn't realize. Uh, I guess it's like the film crew or whatever's on the for the universities on the field, you know, filming practice. I didn't realize how big Henry Toa Toa was. That kid's a monster, man. <laughs> yes, he we're, is. We're man. a sophomore. Yes, kid, that kid's a monster. yes, yes, he is. We, hey. hey. When I was actually over there the other day and seeing some of those kids, man, they've gotten a lot bigger this offseason. We're getting ready to see a legit-looking team, man. I mean, we – you know, because even last year, we were still a lot smaller than some of the teams we played. Man. We were were was smaller than Georgia State. 
That's that's a shame, man. That's, that's we're sad. back, man. We're back, man. I'm glad you're back. As long as we don't get no more of those Butch Jones off the linemen, we're good. You know, them little 220, 230-pound linemen, you know. Man, they get the hell out of here with that stuff. I ain't, I, we don't need that, man. <laughs> I, well, I think I think those days are far gone, man. We got people and leadership in there that that I think Coach Former will at least tell Pruitt, hey, that that ain't gonna make it, man. That ain't gonna make it. That ain't gonna work with those kind of kids, man. We, you got to get some bodies, man. No. And, you know, and and, and 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 you can tell, man, if you had a chance to listen to Pruitt's press conference the other day on Tuesday, you can hear. The difference, the confidence in his voice now compared to his, the last two seasons when the opening, based off the bodies as he have right now, he got some people, some players to play around with right now. He he finally got numbers, you know, and he said he got eighty five scholarship players now. So I can't even imagine what the walk ons are like now. So now, yeah. you, you know, he was, you know, you had to pull guys from that side to create players to make players, you know. Now you got those players that you was creating to be doing what they was brought there to do is be the best scout team player that you can be and show these guys and kick their butts all over the field. It's, it's, I can't wait to see it now. And I was, gosh, I was hoping they wasn't going to leave cancel the spring game and all that stuff. I know they haven't said anything yet, but I know they're going to cancel it, though. They're going to cancel all yeah, the mean, spring events. I wanted to come up. I wanted to come up that day. I wanted to go to the game, but at the same time, I wanted to go over to Hound Dogs and do some stuff over there, and I was kind of conflict of which I really wanted to do, but I wanted really to go to go to the game and get close down on the field as I could and just and just watch these guys and just – and just be like you, you know, last season, me and you were watching games, and you would be like, hey, watch this. Watch this guy right here. Watch what he's about to do. And then, you know, break it down. Break, break it down how you, you do it, you know, play by play, player by player, and just see what kind of monsters we really, really have. I want some big, fat, nasty-ass offensive linemen like we've had in the day. That yes. Just, that would just motor to just truck people, man. They just would truck them ten yards down the field. You know what I'm saying? That's what I miss, man, about Tennessee football. When I, when I when I started watching in '92, you know '91, the transition between majors and uh, I'm sorry, um, um, come on, man. You got it, um, coach former, major and former. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was it was it was it was majors and former. That transition. That's when I started watching about '90 '91. And and then there's this shit I've been watching under Bush Jones. And I'm like, man, this this is not big football, man. This is not what I grew up. This is not what my daddy watched in the '60s and '70s. What the hell? What are we doing? What, what are we, I, you know me? You know me, but I'm gonna keep it real. I, I'm I'm politically incorrect. I don't care. But what the hell was we doing for those six seven years, man? Well, I tell you this here, man. When when they brought in what what he was calling, we got a finesse. Offensive line, finesse, defensive yeah. line, and and when he's when he starts saying those words, that's when he that's when he lost me because there's to me there's yeah. no such thing as a finesse offensive line or defensive lineman. That's not how you. That's that's almost like me saying, David, you're beautiful, instead of someone saying handsome. You know. I don't need that. I, I, I'm as an offensive lineman. <laughs> you got to be nasty. I'm not saying fat, but you got to push some weight. <laughs> you got to be three twenty. You got to be something. <laughs> I knew we screwed up. I knew, and my daddy even said it. My daddy never really. My daddy was a real quiet guy. He didn't really talk, but he he, he talked. He talked a lot during the Tennessee game. I knew we screwed up. When, when 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 Tennessee hired uh, Derek Dooley, because uh, I remember when no no I'm sorry Bush Jones when we when, when we when we hired Bush Jones after Kiffin, my daddy had said uh, he said he said he said Dave we finally screwed up in football and I said what do you mean he said when Derek Dooley beat you as a football coach and then the next couple of seasons they hired Bush Jones from Cincinnati my daddy said oh God. We he said, what are we doing? What, what are we doing, man? We screwed up. We're in trouble, you know? man. 
What's uh, the problem? Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you my whole opinion. I don't think I ever told anybody this about when they fired Coach Former. You know, I cried. I cried. I ain't, well, I ain't gonna be too ashamed. I cried. Man. Hey, I mean, it was a lot of people that cried. You know, I was at the press conference when they did it. You know, a lot of my teammates were there, and if you would have saw the faces in that room, you mean know, it, it really? It was like a funeral, man. You know, that's the way it felt. It was like a funeral. And then when the leadership didn't do their jobs, and when you typically fire a coach, you typically go get a better coach or a coach that is winning, that is up and coming that's winning. We went and got a NFL coach that was losing. We didn't go get like what we should have been doing. Like, hey, if it was me, I'm going to try to get Nick Saban. I'm going to try to get Dabo. I'm going to try to get these coaches that are winning out here. I'm going to get the coach at Oklahoma. I'm going to get those coaches. They didn't not one time replace Tennessee head coach with a winning coach. This is the first time with Coach Pruitt that they actually got a coach that had a winning record coaching, period. And I'm saying winning record, hey, I'm saying 60%. <laughs> but when you hire and when you fire a coach that had a 79% win ratio, you're supposed to be hiring a coach with a 85% ratio. They didn't do that. They, to me, I still say they were trying to sabotage my school, man. <laughs> Somebody was there not you know. trying to do the right thing by it. And, and, and it sucks that I have to say it that way because not one time did I see them pick a coach that has a chance of winning or a or, or proven winner. You know, you don't do that. I mean, yes. you don't see – you didn't see – Georgia go get rid of uh, Mark Rich and get a coach that was not winning. He went got somebody that's winning national championships. That's what you do. You go find whoever won the national championship. You go try to steal a coach off that team. That's that's the only way to do it. You find winners. Winners create winners. If you don't know how to win, coach, you're not going to win. Head coach, a head coach is always good as his assistant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You uh, said it that, perfect. I heard, I, I heard that. I heard Cutcliffe say that. I want to say it. Was. <laughs> uh, what year did he – what year did he leave? I, oh, he, so he left – Cutcliffe left after the SEC championship game in 98. Yes, Sanders he did. took yeah. over – so Sanders took over the, the cool. offensive coordinator at the national championship, right? Uh, yes, the um, yes he did. Actually, the SEC championship he was there. Oh, Cutcliffe was already gone mm -hmm. before the SEC championship. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I, re I remember reading an article and they asked why why was Fulmer so successful, and he says he's, he's, he's got the best assistant coaches in the game. <laughs> that's that's the only way to make it work, man. That's the hey, only. hey, I know what. What some big news happened yesterday here in Georgia, or maybe in Wednesday, was uh, I don't know if you follow high school football, but one of the best high school football coaches in the world, Rush Probst, got fired from Colquitt County here in Georgia, um, and then he got exonerated on the on the on the termination. But I think if Pruitt wants to go out and get a needs in a like a on field or off field guy, Rush Probst. Rush, it's, it's Rush Proach's time to get into college football. He's won seven state championships. He's won two national championships as a high school coach, and he's still got 15, 20 years of coach left. If you want to get a guy in there now that, that would probably come to college football, since Pruitt, Pruitt's got that background in high school football, so he knows Rush Proach's daddy. Uh, Pruitt's daddy's actually back coaching high school football in Alabama. So uh, Rush Proach's. I guess that's how you say probes, pros, I don't know how you say that's that. It, that's, that's right, probes. Well, I had asked my son that's how to pronounce it, you know, because my son played for him. Down there, quick. Man, that dude right there, that dude right there is one of the one of the best 
football coaches. He, he took a little team in Hoover. You know, everybody knows the story of Hoover. That Hoover's a big city, metro, you know, metro of Birmingham. It's, it's still a big city, a lot of kids, but they wasn't. No, they wasn't dominant. They weren't as dominant as they was until he got there. He took them to a powerhouse, left, come over here to Georgia, won a couple state championships, Coquit County, and then then he then he went to Moultrie and and done something some stuff at Moultrie, and I I think that dude's prime for some college football, man. Oh yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, I mean, that's the way my son said it. He was a great coach, great motivator. He he got every ounce of every talent that he had on that field. You know, he he didn't go down there moping about what he didn't have. He created what he needed. You know, he, he worked what he had. And and and, and my son, I tell you, I mean, if you go look at the history of that high school when he went down there to Coquitt County, they wasn't that successful. I mean, you're talking about they took a team that just won one game the year before and didn't win a game the year before that. You know, I'm talking about three games they had won like in the past three seasons or something like that. And he take these guys into undefeated season to the playoffs they play. I mean, he created something down there that that they would never ever have again because once again, once they lost that coach, yeah, they're still competing down there right now, but it's getting ready to go downhill. <laughs> yes. You know, the same the same situation, the perfect example of that the perfect example of taking a high school coach into college is uh Gus Malzahn. Um, you know, when, when when he was coaching, you remember that quarterback at Arkansas, that Mitch Mustang, that five star kid that was supposed to have been the world beater um, at Arkansas. He he was he was uh, he was his head coach the season before. Well, Mitch Mustang, you know, committed to Arkansas and and almost backed out Arkansas, but but uh, you know, Malzahn went with him, started Arkansas, and then just it just blew up. Now look at him, he's at Auburn. So I, I think it I think it's time for college coaches to start reaching out to the high school. Uh, ranks and start pulling these coaches in, man, because you only can rotate these so many coaches, you know, different places. They're not going to be successful everywhere. So, you know. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Here. Let's see what we got. Some more chats on Facebook here. Uh, let's see. Dewey Bowles and the schedule looks great. Beating OU, beating OU will be so sweet. I'd love to see a win over OU. Yeah, I don't do he's actually yes. gonna be a spring game. I don't think there's gonna be a spring game, man. They they've already canceled all the spring events so far. So I wouldn't think that they'll let them play the spring game, you know. I know he already um they already said that they're gonna leave that up to Coach Pruitt to if he's gonna continue the practice, but God knows those kids need that and he, he and I know he wants them to practice to, to kind of get a feel of what we're gonna have this this year because it's tough, man. If you if you going into fall camp and you don't really know what you have coming back, it's gonna be hard for that. And that's gonna be all across the board in college football. Because that's when they get a chance to look at the young guys. It's kinda of like with us, you know, we want to find out our quarterback situation is is Bailey really the truth? Is he ready to play, you know, at the college level and see if he can read the defense like he did in high school. That's, this is the time to see that because this is going to be the closest to having a real live football game in college and seeing the speed change the differences to see if he's ready because I think if we don't have the spring game or have spring practice, college football is going to lose a whole lot of leverage as far as keeping these kids in school now. They're gonna create, you know, a a a huge, how would I say, form system for the XFL. Um, that's what I'm afraid of, you know, especially with the XFL. What's do they did? They're doing good, you know. I wasn't thinking. I didn't think they would start off as good as they did, but they're doing it the right way. Yes. And, and they're not. There's no gimmicks or anything. They're doing like things that make the game look more safe. You know, they're, they're they're still letting you get your head knocked off, but they're doing things safer. Like the one thing that I took away, the only thing that I even saw at XFL is the kickoff. I love that idea how they did it. You know, they basically not letting anybody block or do anything until the 
kick returner touch the ball is when they can actually start running and that's the only time they can start blocking. And I like that. But back to that. But the spring game, it's, it's going to be huge. It's a huge loss if we don't get a chance to do it. So has the university, has the university come out and said that um, – are, 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 are they going to continue to practice through spring on into summer into early fall or, or, or is, is it going to be a dead period like it normally is after the game till you know because you only can practice so many times correct yeah. am I wrong yes you're right I mean only thing that I've heard is they're leaving it up to coach Pruitt to continue the practice or whatever thing like that you know that's that's huge I mean you know, now, and I have to say I have to respect that decision, but and Coach Pruitt will make the right decision. You know, I don't think he'll put the kids in any 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 bad situations for us. What's going on in the world with with the you know the coronavirus situation? You know, because I know that medical staff over there is going to make sure those kids first. You know, because I know the head trainer over there. You know, Jason McVeigh, he's a good guy. He's going to make sure those kids' help is the first and priority to him before Coach Pruitt put them in a bad situation. So I'm, I'm hoping it, it's, it's, it's going to be the right thing. God knows I want them to practice, but I also want them to be safe as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, it, it's just so much confusion right now, so much panic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, people, people, people don't know what to do, so, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, Let's just let this blow over, you know. Now, are, are the kids, are they on spring break now? Is, is that yeah, spring break start is, is on next week. I mean, well, I think they already, you know, shut down school and everything. So, I think spring break already started, so. Man, what would you do if you was head coach? Would you, would, would you, uh, would, would you just pound them kids and just practice as much as you could? Or would you just kind of, would you just kind of cut them back and let them, uh, I, I, what I would probably do, to, to, to be honest with you, I it, it would be most definitely an in-house situation. You know, um, to you know, I would basically, if it was me and if, if it was a big scare like this, make sure everybody on the team and inside the university have have been tested and everything. Make sure everything is good as far as their health wise, and, and once they have that, you know contaminated or whatever, I mean, well, contained as far as in-house, I will probably continue my situation in practice only with my team. I will not have any outside people come in. You know, I will say no media, nothing like that. You know, I, I will have my, my news people, my media crew put out whatever I need to do, like pre-recorded live things for the press and stuff, you know, you know, um, even if they have to do it, you know, digitally where the media have, have to ask questions over the, over the earpiece like they do, you know, in the background where, you know, somebody had, Coach Pro have an earpiece listening to the media online, answering the questions that way. You know, it, there's ways to do it with the technology now. There's a way to do it. So me, I would probably say I would most definitely continue practice with no outside interference. There you go. I 100% agree with you. I saw where I saw where they had closed practice with the media yesterday. So um, they uploaded the video this morning. I watched it when I got up on YouTube, and um, it, it was it was, was kind of clickbait. What they call clickbait on YouTube, and, and uh, they said that it was a uh, Harrison Bailey highlight. So you know I'm automatically going to click on it just to watch it. And uh, it was just showing him taking snaps and hand out to the running backs, and, you know. And I was thinking, well, that's that's some good clickbait, get people get views, you know. But but that's what they they were saying, they were they were saying on the headline, you know, uh, uh, practice close of the media. So I mean, whatever we got to do to, to keep them kids safe, man, do it. Uh, they're gonna do right by it, man. I mean, I know that medical staff, man. Like I said, I know Jason, man, and I know. He, he has a, a lot more authority with the kids than Coach Pruitt does. I mean, the medical staff is 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 what they have. I mean, that staff been together for a long time. So I know they will make the right decision for the kids. I can't wait, man. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I'm just hoping they don't cancel 
everything because uh, I, I mean uh, health uh, health is most definitely the most important thing but I, I, I know I, I'm sounding selfish that I, I, I want to see my team be successful and see what they have this season yeah well they yeah, I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty excited uh, I am too, man. I'm excited, man. So uh, I'm going to get out of here, man. I just realized it's, it's 820. I haven't even got my workout in this morning, man. I was supposed to be in. I didn't realize it was wow. time. But I, I'm up. I'm going to go get it. Hey, I'm already got my water going. And I, I already got my workout yep. gear on. I've already, drank about 60, I've already drank about 60 ounces of water myself this morning. So. Hey. Get it done, man. Make sure you go get you 30 minutes of walking, man. Do something today. Hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sweating on this grill with this brisket too. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Like I said, David, man, thanks for coming on this morning, man. Hey, this won't be the last time. We'll we'll get it in again, and 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 everybody here that's watching, or if you get a chance to watch it later on today, send me a message, man. If you want to come on the show, chat with me, talk to me, be on the show, and have fun with me, let's do it. Until next time, guys. Go Vols. Peace. Go Vols.